Hello, my name is Shahyar Shahyari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on introductory undergraduate combinatorics based on my book, An Invitation to Combinatorics. The subject of this lecture is derangements, and we'll start with a problem that you may have heard about. If you haven't, this is actually a very cute, nice, interesting problem. So the problem is the following. So you have um, N people that they check their hats. They go to a museum, they go someplace, and they all check their hats. When they return, um, the hats are returned randomly. The clerk that was working there loses all the information and just passes out hats to everyone randomly. And, and the question is that, what's the probability that no one gets their own hat? So no one gets their own hat. And, um, and you can think of this as a different kind of a problem. You could say, you know, you're sending um, N emails to N people, but, but you sort of randomly shuffle them and to who, who gets what. And so the question is that, what's the possibility of, what's the probability that no one gets um, their own, um, the, the, the email that was supposed to go to them. Um, now, um, a, a related question, in fact, in fact, in fact, a little bit more interesting question is that, is the probability lower or higher if n is 10 or versus n is 10,000? So if you have 10 people, is it more likely that they will, um, uh, that no one will receive their hat? Or if there's 10,000 people, is the probability? So, so try to think about that, stop the video, try to guess which one of those is going to be uh, the bigger probability. If you have 10 people uh, checking their hats and then um, if you give them back their hats randomly, no one get, what's the probability of them, nobody getting their own hat? Um, or what, what if there were 10,000 people? Which one of those probabilities is the bigger one? Now, to translate this problem to mathematics, we define something called the derangement. So if you, you start with a positive integer and, and the bracket N always stands for um, our typical set with N elements. It's one true N, but we really use it for any set with n elements. In this case, is the n people that are checking their hats. And um, we have a permutation of that. Now, um, a permutation, so, so we have person one, person two, person n. Now, when we return the hats, we are, we are gonna give the hat, fifth person's hat to the first person, sixth person's hat to the second person, third person has to the third person and so on. So um, returning the hats is just gonna be a permutation of one true n, and we'll say that we, we are interested in the case where the, the, in that permutation, that first element is not one, the second one is not two, and the nth one is not n. So none of one true n are in their natural position. So um, if you just write one, two, three, four, five true n, that's also a permutation, the identity permutation, where everything is hasn't been moved, everything is right where it was supposed to be, everyone got their own hat back again. We are interested in the case where no one got their own hat back. So I1 is not one, I2 is not two, and IN is not N. And that such a thing um, is called, a, it's such a permutation of one true N is called a derangement. And we're interested in the number of those derangements. And we call that, I'm gonna call that capital DN, D for derangements. And uh, the answer to our hat check problem is going to be what? So there is, um, uh, there's so many ways that we could permute the hats. How many ways? There's N patterns, there's N factorial ways of permuting them. Dn of them are the derangements when no one gets their own hat back again. And so the answer to the check problem is Dn over N factorial. So if you get a handle over Dn, we will be able to answer um, the hat check problem. So let's look at some examples. So for, for small n, so if n is one, if there's just one person, uh, they're gonna get their whole, whole, whole hat back. Um, they're not, there's not no derangements there. This, the set of derangements is empty and the D, D1 therefore is zero. Now, if you have two people, um, the derangement could be the permutation two, one, instead of one, two, which would be everyone gets their own hat, you could switch them. So there's one derangement. With three, there's two derangements, two, three, one, or three, one, two. See, two, three, one, that means that one gets the, um, set the second person's hat, two gets the third person's hat, and three gets the first person's hat. Nobody's getting their own hat back again. Um, so two, three, one, or three, one, two are both the arrangements. Those are the only ones you can check that. And so D, D three is two. D four, there's already m m many more of them. There's nine of them. So, um, and you can check that these are um, all the derangements, two, one, four, three, two, three, four, one, and so forth. And so the sequence we're interested in is zero, one, two, nine. And already five is not something that you want to, um, um, to do brute force it and try to actually write down all the, all the elements. Okay, so we will just give you a formula for Dn. 
maybe not the nicest formula on earth, but but a pretty nice formula. N is a positive integer, and the N is the number of integer derangements of uh, of bracket N, uh, a set with N elements. And I want to tell you what uh, the N is. And I'm, and I'm going to say that the N is N factorial times a um, um, an alternating sum, one minus one over one factorial plus one over two factorial minus one over three factorial and so on. Whenever you see an alternating thing counting something, you should um, think that might be inclusion exclusion principle might be involved. And, and in fact, that's the case here. And, and so if you want to write it in a compact form, it would be n factorial times the sum of minus one to the k over one times one over k factorial. So we want to prove this. And how we're going to do that, we're going to do that using the inclusion exclusion principle that I want to remind you of. A pri another video goes through the inclusion exclusion principle in some detail, and, and you should watch that um, if this uh, very brief uh, um, explanation is not enough. I'm not going to give you a proof of the inclusion exclusion principle. I do in that um, other video, but, but right now I'm just going to tell you what it is. If you have a set and you have a bunch of subsets of it, then... Um, um, S is, we think of it as our ambient set, sort of a big set, and A1 through AM are sets of elements that we don't actually want to count. What we want to count is uh, the number of elements that are none of them, that are not in A1, that are not in A2, that are not in AM, and so that's the intersection of A1 complement, A2 complement, to AM complement, and the inclusion-exclusion principle says that start with the ambient sets to find the size of that, then throw away the stuff you didn't want, you didn't want the stuff in A1, throw them out, you didn't want the stuff in A2, throw those out, but you have overdone it. You have to add in um, uh, each uh, the size of each pair of intersections because those pairs got thrown out more than once, but you overdid putting things back in. And so you have to take out um, uh, the sizes of all the triple intersections, put back in the quadruple intersections and so on all the way till the end. And again, the proof of this is in a different video. Watch that. And that, that first sum... Um, has one term for each subset of size one of um, one through M. Uh, the second one has, um, the second sum has one term for each subset of size two of one through M and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is exclusion, inclusion, exclusion. If this is completely foreign to you, if this is sounds gibberish, go watch the, 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 the other video. Otherwise, we are going to use it to answer the hat check problem. So what, what we're going to use it for is to find, if the, the, to prove this formula for the, the number of derangements, dn. So, um, so to do that, we have to do a setup. So we have to always set when we want to use a, uh, when we, whenever we want to use the inclusion exclusion, we have to decide what are our ambient set, which is a set that's bigger than uh, the things we actually want to count. So here the set is all permutations of one true n. And then um, each a1, a, there's going to be n of them. A1 is going to be those elements uh, um, of s that one is in its natural position. A2 is going to be those permutations where two is in its natural position. And in general, AJ is going to be those permutations where J is in its natural position. Um, um, and, and what we want to count is um, things that where nothing is in its natural position. So those permutations where are not in A1, are not in A2, and are not in AN, and, and uh, none of the other ones either. So we want the size of A1 complement, intersection A2 complement, intersection A and complement. And so we have set this up as, um, as exactly the way inclusion exclusion works. Now you have to set it up right like this, but the other trick is that you have to set it up in a way that you can actually count the size of S or the size of a, the, the A's or their intersections. If you can't do that, then you have translated the problem to a different problem, but one that you can't do either. In this case, we can do that. We can do all of these things mainly because of the following fact that um, if you have um, permutation, if you want to, you can count the number of permutations of one through n if you know k of the elements are actually in their positions. If you know k of them are in their natural positions, that's not what we want when we were counting the arrangements, but it is what we want when we are using inclusion exclusion. If you want k of the elements to be in their positions, well, put those in their positions, and then you have n minus k elements that you can permute as at will, and, and that's going to be uh, n minus k factorial. But this is if k specific elements of n are in their natural positions, you know which ones, and more of them could be in their natural positions also, but but you just want to know those k, if they're in the natural positions, how many are there, are, are there? and the answer is n minus k factorial. So given that, 
the size of S, well, that's the all permutations, that's n factorial, everything, um, everything could be anywhere. Nothing is necessarily in its natural positions or not. So that's n factorial. Um, what about AJ? So AJ is, we want J in its natural position. So put J in its natural position at J, then you have N minus one things to permute at will, and you get N minus one factorial. Now among those, there's a whole bunch that have A5 also in their natural position. That's not, that, that we are okay with that. That's what inclusion exclusion is gonna take care of. That. But that double counting is gonna be taken care of by the inclusion exclusion principle. And what about AI intersection AJ? Well, there you want I and J, two very specific things in their natural position, and you don't care what happens to the rest. So the rest, there's N minus two things and you um, permute them and there's N minus two factorial ways of doing that. And so what's the N? The N going to, is going to be N factorial, the size of S, minus uh, the size of, have to add up all the uh, sizes of uh, A1, A2, and so forth. But it, all of them have the same size. They're all the size, n minus one factorial, and there's n choose one of them. So, so when I subtract that, what I have to subtract is n choose one times n minus one factorial, but I've overdone it. I have to now add in uh, the size of all the uh, pairs of intersections, but all the pairs have the same size um, of intersection, n minus two factorial, and there's n choose two of them. So what I have to add in is n choose two n minus two factorials, and then I subtract and add and subtract and go till the end. And so, if, uh, and, and now I can simplify this because n choose one is n factorial divided by one factorial times n minus one factorial, which cancels this n minus one factorial. And n choose two is n factorial over two factorial times n minus two factorial, and that n minus two factorial cancels this one. So what I'm left with is n factorial minus n factorial over one factorial plus n factorial over two factorial minus n factorial over three factorial all the way till the end. And if you factor n factorial, you will get the formula for the n. I haven't answered the hat trick problem yet, but we have now found a formula for dn. So let's think about this formula a little bit. So dn again is the number of arrangements of bracket n. And we just found that the formula for it is this alternating sum multiplied by n factorial. Now, for example, d5, you can now find it. It's five factorial times one minus one plus one half plus minus one six plus one twenty fourth minus one over 120. It's odd that this thing is gonna end up telling us the number of derangements, but it does, and it's 44. Okay, but what we were interested in was the uh, the probability uh, that no one gets their hat back, and now we have, we have that. The n over n factorial is this thing. One minus one over one factorial, or plus one over two factorial, minus one over three factorial, and so forth. Now, this is a formula for it, and you, for any n, you could put it in, but but we but but it's not super illuminating in the sense that I like for example the original question um, what about ten and uh, ten thousand if I have ten uh, uh, people will is there probability more or if if n is ten or if n is at ten thousand which one of them has more uh, higher probability I'm still not quite done there there so this is the formula that I have for uh, d n over n factorial the probability of no no none of the n people getting their hat back and um, uh, but but I want to think about this slightly differently. You you could be thinking of this as well. We just um, um, found a formula for the n. But you can also think of it the, the, the other way around. You can think of it as we had this partial sum of some kind of a series, and we were adding them, and we noticed something. So you might say, well, I had one minus one over one factorial, or or this one and that one. These are partial sums of a of, of a series. And, and you, you had nothing better to do. And so you found uh, what these things were. And you notice that the denominators are one factorial, two factorial, three factorial, four factorial, five factorial, which is not surprising given what you're adding up. But then the numerators are zero, one, two, nine, and 44 and, and go on. And you're wondering what those numbers are. And those numbers we have just proved are uh, the derangements numbers. So this is the other way you can think about it is that the derangements come up um, in naturally, for example, if you're doing some kind of calculus and 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 you're finding um, partial sums of an infinite series, uh, these derangement numbers will come up. And and if and, and when you see them there, then you're very surprised because you were looking at this uh, partial sums and what do derangements have to do with that? But we can now use that in some other way. So um, so so again, the answer to Hatchek problem is dn over n factorial. But now what I'm going to tell you is that the limit of the n over n factorial is n goes to infinity as the number of patterns goes to infinity is one over e of all things. And uh, 
moreover, and this is the interesting thing, is in the hat check problem, for all n greater or equal to six, the probability that no one receives their own hat rounded to the thousands place is 0.368. So for all practical purposes, it doesn't really make any difference. 10 people or 10,000 people, the probability of no, no one getting um, their own hats back is basically the same. It's not actually the same. It's going to be slightly different. But the point is that to the thousands placed is the same. Okay, so why is this? Well, the proof is actually pretty straightforward. Um, we found that the n over n factorial is given by this uh, alternating sum. And that's the partial sum of um, the series, uh, the expansion, series expansion for one over e. Why is that? Well, e to the x is one plus one over one factorial x plus one over two factorial x squared and so forth. If instead of x you put minus one, you get the e to the minus one or one over e is this alternating uh, series. And, um, and, and, and so uh, if you look at the, the difference between one over e and dn over n factorial, what you get is the rest of that uh, series. There's the stuff that you didn't add up. And, and this is an alternating series and the terms are getting smaller. So that means that um, if you cut it off at some point, uh, the biggest error is actually the next term. Because after that, so, so you, you, maybe you're subtracting that number, but then after that, you're adding a little bit less and, and subtracting a little bit less and so forth. Uh, you're never going to go past that one over n plus one. I mean, uh, the, the error is going to be at most that uh, the, the first term um, that, um, that you left out. And everything follows from that. Because when n is greater or equal to six, first of all, if n goes to infinity, this difference goes to zero. But but um, also, if n is uh, greater or equal to six, this number is small enough that its effect on um, will be uh, too little. And, and I mean, for six, you will have to for yeah, you just you plug in uh, for six, see what you get. You get that it's 0.36. And if and if n is greater than uh, greater or equal to seven, uh, then the error will be so small. Uh, then, then the effect will not be um, in, in 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 the first three digits. Um, okay. Now, uh, so so that was uh, our our hat check problem. But I want to continue with uh, the arrangements a little bit. Usually, what we do with uh, with a, with a sequence of numbers uh, that we don't know, and if we get a formula like the one we got, which is not completely satisfactory because it's a pretty large sum, is that we look try to look for a uh, for a uh, for a um, recurrence relation. And that's what we're going to do. So dn is the number of arrangements of n. And what I want to, well, d1 is zero, d2 is one. And then for n greater or equal to three, I want to prove to you that dn is n minus one times dn minus two plus dn minus one. And usually we do this with some kind of a thought experiment, try to tell you why the, the, the arrangements um, of one through n are coming in, in, in a number of varieties and, and, and split into cases. And, and then get this. And so here's the proof. So I'm going to define a new thing, little dn. And dn is going to be the number of derangements of bracket n, just like capital dn was, but with one proviso that two is in the first position. I just put two in its first position. That's what dn is. Now, if you think about it, there's nothing special about two. So if I put three or four or five or six or seven, um, it's going to be the same. The, the number of derangements that have any one of those things um, in their first place. If you put one in its first place, there is no derangement that has one in its first. But the other ones are all created equal. And because of that, capital DN is going to be N minus one times DN. If you're not completely satisfied with that argument that all two through N are all the same, think of it this way. If you put um, two, two in its first place, then what, what the rest have to do? The rest, you have to make sure that three through N are not in their positions, but one can be anywhere you like. So you have this one... Uh, one, because we already filled in the first position. One can be anywhere you like. Now, if you put three in the first position, um, still the same thing. The rest of them can't be in their own positions, but one can be anywhere it likes. So um, so, so, uh, so, what you're counting is going to be the same for all of them. And because of that, um, uh, um, the number of derangements where two is in its first position or three is in, are, are going to be the same as the ones where three is in, its, in, in the first position. And because of that, the total number of derangements is just going to be n minus one times the n because anything other than one could be in its first place. Okay, but now I'm going to look, that's where the n minus one comes. Now I'm going to tell you uh, something about little dn. So now let's assume that two is in the first position. Now, if you do that, there are two things you, you might might happen. Either one is in the second position or it's not. Okay, 
that either that's the case or not. So two is in the first position. Either one is in second position or it's not. If one is in the second position, that means you started with two, one. And then what do you've got to do with the rest? The rest, you just have to find a derangement to, to get a derangement. You've got to get a derangement of the rest. So if one is in the first position, then uh, the ways to complete it is capital D N minus two, the number of derangements of N minus two things, because now you have three true N and you need a derangement of that because already you picked two and one and you're done. But what if uh, one is not in the second position? If one is not in the second position, then, then look at what you have. You have one, three, four true um, uh, N and three, four, none of those can be in that, in that position and one can't be in that position. So you really have it, uh, derangements of n minus one things. I mean, um, and 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 therefore you can complete it in the n minus one ways. And so little d n is the n minus two plus the n minus one. And if you put the two things in the box together, you get the um, recurrence relation you want. And we're done with that. I'm going to come up with another recurrence relation using that. I'm going to bootstrap the, 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 the recurrence relation we had and get a second one. So this time we'll say that the number of derangements of n, and this one I'm just going to tell you d1 is zero. And for n greater or equal to two, dn is just n times the n minus one plus minus one to the n. Now you can check that that works for, the, for n equals two, but for n greater than um, uh, three, greater or equal to three, we have the thing that we had before, that dn is n minus one times dn minus two plus dn minus one. And I'm going to rearrange that. I'm going to rearrange that by saying that that means that I'm going to take, see, on the other side, I have n times dn minus one and also a minus one times dn minus one. I'm going to bring the n times dn minus one to the, to the left-hand side, and I'm going to get dn minus n, dn minus, the, n times dn minus one. What am I going to left with that side? The dn minus one, there's a minus of those, and then there is minus n minus one dn minus two. So this weird algebra is just algebra, but but but, but it works. Um, from that first relation, I can get that. But now I notice that this dn minus one minus n minus one times dn minus two is exactly that form. Is exactly um, the form of dn minus n dn minus one, but except with n replaced with n minus one. So dn minus n times dn minus one is this, but then dn minus one minus n minus one dn minus two is gonna be the same thing, except we replace n, n with n minus one. And when you do that, you every time you're introducing a negative. So what you get is negative one squared, dn minus two minus n minus two dn minus two. So I'm unwinding um, this recurrence relation and, and going to the next one. And then I'm saying, well, what can I say about that? Well, that also, is going to be equal to minus the one before that. And so another minus will uh, will get thrown in there and you get minus one cubed to the n minus three, minus n minus three, the n minus four. And this continues until you get to d2 minus two d1. But um, um, but then d, d2 is one and d1 is zero. And so uh, the thing in parentheses is just going to be one. And so you get minus one to the n minus two. And minus one to the n minus two is the same as minus one to the n um, because they are both have the same parity. If n is odd, so will be n minus two. If n is even, so will be n minus two. So um, so dn is going to be bringing the n, dn minus one now to the, um, to, to the right-hand side. I get the second recurrence relation that I wanted. So let me wrap up by telling us what we did today. So we, we defined what a derangement is. The derangement is a permutation of one true n where nothing in its, in its natural position. One is not in its natural position, two is not in its natural position and so forth. Um, then uh, we called the number of such things, the ca capital DN. We came up with a formula for DN, which was a partial sum. Um, it was n factorial times a partial sum of the series expansion for one over E. And because of that, we notice that the limit of the n over n factorial as n goes to infinity is one over e of all things. In counting uh, derangements, e comes in. Interesting. We also came up uh, with uh, a recurrence relation and a second recurrence relation uh, for the n. Using these recurrence relations, of course, you can write down as much of the sequence as you want, and you see that this sequence grows actually quite fast. You, you might have tried finding d5 by hand, but I don't think you would want to do d6 or d7 or d8 um, and so forth. But with the recurrence relation, uh, you can find it uh, quite fast. Uh, this is the end of this lecture. If you like to be subjected to vi undergraduate video, undergraduate math videos like this one, um, like and uh, subscribe to my channel.
and I will see you in the next lecture.